What's going on, Tar Heel Nation? It is your favorite North Carolinian, Russ the Tar Heel. And in this episode, unfortunately, we have to talk about the 87 to 76 loss that the number nine North Carolina suffered at the hands of the number five Yukon Huskies at Madison Square Garden in New York City last night. But before we get into that, I want to give a huge shout out to all of Tar Hill Nation and even some of the trolls that stayed up late last night to watch the game only to have to drag ourselves in to work the next day. Win, lose, or draw, we are going hard for the heels, and I think there was some growth that occurred last night. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get into the nitty-gritty of this thing, man. As was aforementioned, North Carolina moves to 7-2 and two on the season after suffering an 11-point defeat at the hands of the Huskies. And the game seemed, at least to me, an uphill battle from the start. Carolina did jump out to an early 4-0 lead uh, on a Baycott run-out dunk. And then Elliott had a real nice stinking uh, layup high off the glass, real high off the glass. But uh, once the team started to get into their sets, UConn was clearly the more polished team. I know Carolina fans might not like that, but it just kind of seems like it's the simple fact of the matter, if you will. All of the action that the Huskies ran and the constant barrage of screens that Carolina had to defend along with the communication on the switches was going to be a tough obstacle to overcome. UConn is a really good basketball team. And let's not forget that they only lost by four to Kansas in Allen Fieldhouse. And nobody wins in Allen Fieldhouse, man. But UConn just played extremely good basketball. They had some shooters that hit key shots. Carolina got caught on the backdoor screen a couple of times for easy buckets. But with all that being said, they battled. And they were in this game almost until the very end. It just had that feeling of a army crawl up a hill, man. Like, you know, just this forever crawl up a hill. And every time that you thought that you were about to reach the summit, you would get there, and then there's just another summit. Carolina just couldn't hit the shots to get over the hump, and UConn would pull away again. And then the second half seemed to be a lot of isolation calls for North Carolina, especially with RJ and Harrison as opposed to running you know, the sets that they were running in the first half. And, you know, I mean, give credit where credit is due. UConn was doing a really good job of, um, you know, disturbing North Carolina's motion offense, if you will. Now, RJ and Harrison played with their hair on fire like we expected from both of them, especially in the second half. And there was a point in that game where I really thought legitimately – that RJ was going to stink and put this team on his back and single-handedly carry them to victory. I think Carolina cut it at one point to like 65-60. And then, you know, they missed like two or three shots in a row. And then I remember Carolina would actually get a stop on the other end, and you're like, man, eventually, dude, we have got to convert on one of these possessions. We've got to stink and close this gap even more. I mean, it was like 65-60, if I'm not mistaken, for a couple of possessions. And then Jalen Withers, you know, he gets his back to the basket, and uh, he misses a turnaround over his left shoulder. And I remember thinking after that, I was like, man, it was just so deflating. It was like, is that the shot that we want? You know, just with the way that he's played in that situation, is that the shot that we wanted? And then UConn goes on an 18-6 run, after that, I think Carolina missed the last 14 or 14 of their last 16 shots from the field, man. And it was just, we just couldn't get over that hump. Now, let's talk about that for a second. So, Withers has really struggled since coming over to Carolina, man, to find his role and has legitimately become 
kind of a liability on both sides of the floor, man. All right. Um, he's got great length. He's got a solid frame. And we really do need him to at least impact the defensive end in the minutes that he's getting. But he looks fairly lost out there sometimes, man. And I'm not trying to attack the kid. I'm sure he's he's a good kid, man. And I'm sure he's a good basketball player. He just hasn't found his footing yet. And when he's on the floor, you know, it's 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 to the point where I'm kind of not expecting too much, man. I'm just I'm I'm just gonna be honest with you. Hopefully he can get it figured out soon. Cormac Ryan. You know, um, you talk about up and down, always bringing the energy. But Cormac went three for 10 from the field and 0 for six from three, dude. He just could not find it tonight at all. His last one literally almost went through the stinking bucket before like pinballing back out. Just a rough return to New York for Ryan. And like I said in the preview video, if Carolina was going to have a chance to win this game, they were going to have to knock down some open threes, and Ryan just wasn't able to convert last night. He hits maybe two, two or three of those. We'll just say two. I mean, we may be literally singing a different tune because he had a couple of really good looks as Carolina was trying to close the gap, but they just would not fall. And he is legitimately hovering at somewhere around 25% from three early this season, man. So he has got to do better than that if this team is going to go from good to really good. Armando started really strong, but then he struggled a little bit with UConn's length, which I expected that he might. That was one of my concerns. You know, obviously he's a, a bigger guy, but he's not very explosive off the bounce. Um, he's not really an above-the-rim player, if you will. And, um, I mean, he just, any time that he was one-on-one -on -one back to the basket and he was having to create his own offense... You know, you saw a couple of blocks. You saw uh, the help side defense and the inability to, um, you know, hit the open guy on the outside a couple of times. And, you know, it just it wasn't his best performance. I'm not going to say that he played bad because I wouldn't say that. He had a double-double, 13-13. and 13. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about it later. Somebody else has got a rebound aside from Armando Baycott. As good as he is on the glass, he cannot be the only person collecting boards, man. We have got to get more bodies to the glass because UConn was able to get a lot of extra possessions, man, on tip outs and everything after a miss. So um, he finished with 13 and 13, but one of the big things that hurt us is that he was five for 10 from the free throw line. Now it could have easily been his legs from trying to lean on Klingon. Uh, you were kind of able to see some of Mondo's scoring limitations like I had just talked about. And uh, they really did. They did a, a decent job of making him take some tough shots. Shots that he doesn't really usually take, per se. Um, Ingram took a little bit of time to get going. But when he did, obviously, he stinking balled out. He scored 20 points. And you got to ask yourself, man, has that guy been the best three-point shooter on Carolina's team? I mean, last night, and it, it kind of surprised me like, when I looked at the box score. I mean, he played well. But it was kind of quiet, man. He was 8 for 13 from the field and 3 for 4 from 3. And he literally, dude, I'm telling you, you feel confident when Harrison sets his feet. If that guy's got a set three-point shot, and I, you got you to gotta say that it's at least a 50-50 ball of him knocking it down, man. He's been impressive from beyond the arc. And uh, Carolina might want to definitely draw up some more plays of trying to get him some open looks, man. And then Elliot Cadeau finished with seven points and five assists. Really showed some explosiveness going to the bucket with especially the right hand. Now, here's the, here's the thing, man. Carolina got four points from his bench, and they were out-rebounded 43-33. It was just one of those games where it felt like Carolina had to fight for everything they got. I mean, every, every bucket that Carolina scored, it felt like, like a relief almost. And the UConn would go down on the other end and their motion offense and all the screen action and everything. I mean, they were just, they were so fluid. You know, they were so well versed in what they were doing. And um, it almost seemed like they were on autopilot. It was just, it was looking at two different offenses from my personal perspective. And um, you gotta, you gotta really say, man, their motion offense was extremely impressive. It may be the best offense that Carolina plays all year. And then number 12, obviously, was giving off some 
J.J. Reddick, John Shire, Greg Paulus vibes. You know, a face that's punchable. But he was he was hard to guard, man. And he finished with 23. And then you had Caravan, who had a real quiet game, too. He kept popping open and banging some stinking threes, especially as of late. So that kid finished with 18 points himself. He went 8 for 17 from the field and only 2 for 9 from 3, but he also had 9 boards, man. Like I said, UConn really attacked the glass. And even on a, a bunch of their missed shots, um, you know, they stinking, they attacked the glass, man, and they gave themselves a couple of extra possessions. And, uh, I mean, that may be the best team that Carolina plays all year outside of March, man. And look. They hung with them. They battled. Yeah, it was an 11-point defeat. Yes, the lead ballooned to 17 at one time. But Carolina was able to battle, man. And we're still young in this season. That's the perspective that I want Carolina fans to look at. You know, we're kind of an uncharted territory, obviously. Um, you know, this is a, it's kind of hard for us to, to fathom. You know, but we are literally attempting to get back to that old Carolina form. And it's kind of like maybe you could say where UConn is right now. We're trying to get back there, man. And I think that we have some good pieces to where we can make a really good stinking run, man. A really good stinking run. Um, but it's still young in the season, and these guys are still working together. They're learning how to play basketball together, man. And that was a great learning opportunity right there. The defending national champions, neutral site, Madison Square Garden. I mean, that's that's Elite Eight vibes right there. Final Four vibes, man. Packed house. You know, great opportunity for Carolina to uh, get some really good experience in said situations. And like we had talked about, man, R.J. Davis. I mean, what is that, four or five games in a row that he scored over 20 points? The guy just off the ball, he has shown himself to be just an absolute – just, he, he's playing with his hair on fire, man. I mean, the guy is a stinking scorer. He just knows how to stink and score. And I think that sometimes, especially in the second half, Carolina would just kind of look at him and Harrison and be like, hey, do something. It's a lot of watching. And uh, that's just how good they've been. And we can't do that. You know, we can't just go to these ISO sets in the second half when we're down and just ask those guys to carry us. We've got to get more production from some of the other spots, man. Cormac has got to stink and hit some shots. You know, and, and like I said, Carolina is that close. Carolina's that close because if Cormac hits, hits some shots, talking about a different ball game, man. You know, especially in some key situations where maybe that gives Carolina a little lead. Maybe it puts a little pressure on UConn. So I'm just saying, with this loss, you know, it's not the worst loss that you can have. There's a lot that you can glean from this game, and I want Carolina fans, Tar Heel Nation, to understand that. So Carolina finishes the game 44.4% from the field. UConn way too high, 51.5% from the field. You know, anytime somebody's shooting over 50%, bro, that's not good. Carolina was 35% from beyond the arc. UConn was 32.3. Like I said, at the end of the first half, they were like, it was like 12.7%. So they really started banging some threes, knocking down some deep balls in the second half. Especially, it seemed like every time that Carolina would make a run, they'd hit a big three. And it would just kind of, it's like a dagger, you know. And then the aforementioned out-rebounded 43-33. to 33. So we got to get some better play on the boards, man. Can't be letting these guys get second chance opportunities like that. So, you know, Carolina loses 87-76, to 76, man. Um, and... Like I said, I thought that this was going to be a really, really tough game for North Carolina for a lot of different reasons, man. And, um, you know, they played admirably, though. You know, they were there. They battled. Uphill battle. And uh, who knows? They may meet these guys again in March. And they've got that experience. And they know what to look for, et cetera, et cetera. So this goes into a crazy time right now. We're about to go 11 days without a basketball game. Carolina does not play again until December 16th against Kentucky, which is obviously a huge game in and of itself, man. So take this time, bro, to, to, to enjoy your families, enjoy the Christmas season, man. Um, we'll be putting out a couple of things 
here and there. Your boy is about to finally go on vacation, man. I'm about to take five days with the family. We're going to get out of here and um, we're going to have a good time, bro. I'm not going to think about work. I'm going to try not to think about anything else. We're just going to relax. We're going to relax. I'm going to do my best. Don't be surprised if I put something out in these next five days because I just can't help it. But um, anyway, tough loss, bro. Tough loss, but it's not the end of the world. It's a good learning experience. And it's the number five team in the nation, the defending national champion. So I can't stress that enough, Tar Heel Nation. Hey, just keep it all into perspective, man. They played a really good basketball team, and sometimes you got to give credit where credit is due. And right now, UConn is more polished than North Carolina is. It is what it is. So, you know, let's just face the facts. Let's face reality. But let's also understand that UConn, and I'll finish with this, UConn, you know, they've kind of, they're, they're playing really good. So I mean this is no slight at all. They're, they're maximizing themselves for the most part. Obviously, they can grow here and there. But they have a ceiling, and they're playing so well that they're there. Carolina is not at their ceiling yet. Carolina still has room to grow. And that's what we're going to be watching, that growth as this season progresses, especially, you know, Kentucky, Oklahoma, a couple of more non-con games, and then we get into huge, just pivotal ACC play, which is going to be really exciting this year. You know, we're going to watch this team grow, and we're going to see if Carolina can get to their ceiling before March. But 87-76, you know, not going to lose any sleep over it, man. I think they battled, and I think that there's a lot that they learned, and there's a lot that we can be proud of. Um you know, with the past couple of seasons that we've had where Carolina would get down and they wouldn't fight. I'm proud of the boys' fight, man. So let me know what you think about this game down in the comments section, Tar Heel Nation. UConn Husky fans, man, let me know what you think about this game. Was Carolina, did they blow some opportunities to actually get a huge win? Or do you think maybe they just ran into a more polished team at this junction of the season? I don't know, man. Let me know what you think. If you haven't already, like, share, subscribe to the channel, and think about becoming a member of the Huddle Hooligans. Just a couple dollars a month, man. It's your way of just kind of showing a little bit extra support for the channel, and you have no idea how much I appreciate it and how much I appreciate the Huddle Hooligans. Big shout out to Carlton Van Hoy, Scott Chef, Preston from Greensboro, Lack Rageum, coconuts and grits elijah and my man dennis man i appreciate you guys so much for your contribution man you have no idea how much it helps man i love you tar hill nation and we will catch you on the next one baby